polar equations of conics. You're probably familiar with graphing conics using rectangular coordinates. Now we're going to talk about how you can graph conics using polar equations. And we need to talk about eccentricity. If the eccentricity of the conic is less than 1, then you have yourself an ellipse. If it's equal to 1, then you have yourself a parabola. And if it's greater than 1, then the conic is a hyperbola. One thing to remember when you're graphing polar equations of conics is that a focus will always be at the pole. So, for example, if this is the line theta equals pi over 2, and this is theta equals 0, then you always have a focus right there. So let's say that we've got a parabola. Then maybe the directrix would be right here, and your parabola would be going like that. Or you may have a situation like this. You've got a focus at the pole. Here's the line theta equals pi over 2. This is theta equals 0. And you have a directrix this way. And you might have an ellipse going like that. So the question arises, well, how do we know which way the directrix is going so we can tell which way our symmetry of our conic is going to be? Well, all polar equations are of this form. They're either EP over 1 plus or minus E cosine theta or EP over 1 plus or minus E sine theta. And E, of course, stands for eccentricity. And if you have cosine theta, then you have a vertical directrix with a horizontal axis. So that means that here's the pole. That's pi over 2. That's 0. And your directrix is either over here or over here. Now, if it's over here to the left of the pole, you're using 1 minus e cosine theta. If it's over here to the right, you're doing 1 plus e cosine theta. Now, if we have 1 plus or minus e sine theta, no surprises here. Our directrix is horizontal. And we have vertical axis symmetry. OK? So if it's 1 plus e sine theta, it's above the pole. And 1 minus e sine theta, it's below the pole. Now, what's this p right here? Well, p is the distance between the focus at the pole and the directrix, wherever it happens to be. OK? Let's do some problems. So here we're going to identify the conic and sketch its graph. Notice that on all of these problems back here, it's positive 1 in the denominator, not negative 1. It's positive 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by negative 1, which gives me 1 minus 2 cosine theta. That means that E is 2, which is greater than 1. So we are graphing a hyperbola. OK, it's 1 minus cosine. So that also means that the directrix is vertical. And it's to the left of the pole. OK, so where are the vertices? Well, they're going to be somewhere along the axis r or theta equals 0. So let's do r of 0, and we get negative 5 over 1 minus 2 cosine 0, which is negative 5. That's a 0, not a theta. Negative 5 over 1 minus 2, which is positive 5. So we have a vertex where r is 5 and theta is 0. Then let's do one going in the other direction, which would be theta equal to pi. That's going to be negative 5 over 1 minus 2 cosine pi, which is negative 5 over 1 plus 2, which is negative 5 thirds. OK, so putting all this together, there's pi over 2. 
there's 0. And when I'm facing theta equals 0, I'm going to walk out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's one vertex. When I'm facing pi, I'm going to go backwards 5 thirds. So there's negative 3 thirds, negative 5 thirds, right about there. And remember that I always have a focus at the pole. So this situation is looking something like this. And that's pretty much all you need to do. We've identified the conic and we've sketched the graph. Okay, now we're going to find a polar equation of the conic with a focus at the pole. And we know it's an ellipse. The eccentricity is 1 half. The directrix is y equals 1. So let's graph what we know. Here's our line, theta equals pi over 2. Here's theta equals 0. We have a directrix of y equal 1. Since it's horizontal and above the axis, it's going to be in the form of r equals e p over 1 plus e sine theta. Now, we know that e is 1 half. What's p? Well, remember that we've got a focus at the pole. And p is that distance between the directrix and the focus, which in this case is 1. So filling in what we know, r equals 1 half over 1 plus 1 half sine theta. And we don't like fractions inside fractions. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2. I'm going to get 1 over 2 plus sine theta. So let's look at our next problem here. Now we have a hyperbola, and the vertices of this hyperbola are at 1, 3 pi over 2, and 9, 3 pi over 2. So let's sketch real quickly what we know. Remember, these are polar coordinates, so that's r comma theta. So if I'm facing 3 pi over 2, I'm facing this direction. The first vertex is where I get when I walk out one step. The next vertex is where I get when I walk out nine steps. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got a vertex there. I've got a vertex there. And remember that we always have a focus at the pole. So this hyperbola is doing something like this. OK? All right. now. We've got a directrix somewhere below and going horizontal. <clears throat> so this is going to be in the form of r equals e p over 1 minus e sine theta. So what's e? Well. We can figure out the center of this hyperbola by getting the midpoint between the two vertices. And that happens to be right at 5 comma 3 pi over 2. And remember that in rectangular coordinates, c is the distance from a focus to the center. And a is the distance from a vertex to the center. So E equals C over A, which is 5 over 4. So we've got E. Well, what about P? To find P, I'm going to use the fact that R is 1 when theta is 3 pi over 2. So 1 equals 5 fourths p over 1 minus 5 fourths sine 3 pi over 2, which is 5 fourths p over 1 plus 
5 fourths, which is 5 fourths p over 9 fourths. Flip and multiply, I get 1 equals 5 fourths p times 4 ninths. Fours cancel, and I get 5 ninths p equals 1, which means that 9 fifths equals p. So our final equation is going to be r equals the eccentricity 5 fourths times p 9 fifths over 1 minus 5 fourths sine theta. Okay, so the fives cancel there. If I multiply through everything by 4, I'm going to get 9 over 4 minus 5 sine theta. And that's the equation of this hyperbola with the given vertices. So I hope you have fun with uh, polar equations of conics.